Hi Jean, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I just wonder if you could start by just kind of introducing yourself, telling us a bit about you. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, so I'm Jean. Uh, I'm in on the outskirts of Bristol, uh, a place called Stoke Gifford, and uh, I'm involved in the pastoral ministry there. Uh, I'm retired. I've got three children and nine grandchildren that keep me busy, but I've also got a huge passion. Wow, cool, that's a lot. No, that sounds absolutely brilliant, thank you. And I just wondered if you could start by just telling us a little bit about Kintsugi Hope as a whole. Yeah, yeah, and that is my passion. Um, so basically it was started by a, a chap called Patrick Reagan, OBE, who is a committed Christian and a very successful CEO of a, a charity in London called XLP, but who for whom um, life hit and hit him hard, lots of different things, illness, children, parents, elderly parents. And um, he suddenly realized he was struggling with anxiety. And yet on the outside, everything looked perfect. Being interviewed by magazines and you know, being seen with royals, but nobody saw what was going on on the inside. He wrote a book called Honesty Over Silence. And I heard him speak, and he was just about to set up a charity called Kintsugi Hope because he found what really helped him was being heard, truly heard, yeah. being honest in a safe, supportive space. That's what he's, uh, he's done with Kintsugi Hope. He's set up a charity that um, is, provides, in partnership with churches, safe, supportive spaces for people to be honest and vulnerable and realise they're not alone for them to grow and flourish in their emotional and mental well-being. Uh, it was for such a time as this, really. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I think it's very, um, I think we're all very acutely aware of how big of a as kind of a topic mental health is and just the need for this. That's amazing. Thank you. That Just thank you for sharing that. Um, and I believe you've been running groups since kind of the pilot phase in 2018? Yes. Yes. So I heard speak um, as a spring harvest actually and um, it just spoke to me. I'd had my own journey with family members and then with my own personal experience of just poor emotional and mental well-being and I think the word mental kind of conjures up you know the wrong things for people. We've got yeah. physical health and we've got mental health and uh, this is what this is about helping people with their mental health. Um, so yeah I, I volunteered, heard him speak and thought I believe everything this man's saying and so offered my services and uh, ran their pilot first pilot group or one of them and subsequently I've run, been running groups ever since and I'm now an ambassador for Bristol Kintsugi Hope. That's amazing Jean and can you just tell us a bit about so being a volunteer and, and running it from that end what would you say people gain from that experience or kind of get from the experience of being a volunteer? Right. So basically, I mean, we're called leaders, but we're not leaders. There is no leader. It is, an, there's an equality. It's called peer-led mentoring. So we're all in it together. Um, so whilst I facilitate the groups, I'm also partake in them uh, because there's always layers of ourselves that we can learn more about. Um, and so each each session, each, each group that I run, I get something out of as well. And so do the other volunteers. In fact, from the groups, we've... We've had people who've got so much from it, they want to train and they've trained to become uh, Kintsugi Hope leaders themselves. Wow, that's fantastic. And then finally, kind of moving on to arguably, um, I imagine where you have the, the stories and the inc incredible moments from, for those attending the courses, have you got anything that perhaps a story that comes to mind that you could share about what the participants themselves gain from the experience? Oh, there's lots, there's lots, Abby, really. But um, the, the one thing that I think almost every person that's been on one of my groups has said is that A, they don't want it to end. And uh, B, the feeling that they're not alone that for some long time they might have been holding on to, you know, feeling struggles that they felt it was just them and realising, no, it's part of our common humanity, learning more about themselves. Um, we had a lovely couple in my last group who were, who were planning to get married, but wanted honesty in their relationship right from the beginning. 
and wanted to share vulnerability together. So they did the group together and got an awful lot from it. Equally, I've had older people who have at the age of 60, 65, said, I, under I now understand myself better. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's a space for people to grow and flourish, I think, no matter what age. Yeah. Oh, so special. Thank you, Jean. I think, I mean, I feel so passionately about it and can't wait to get started. But but hearing from you as you've, you know, journey from the very beginning, that's just really special to hear. So thank you. And thank you so much for, for agreeing to do this for us this morning. Thank You're very you. welcome. It's my pleasure. Bye. <laughs> Bye.